Welcome to r slash pro revenge, where OP completely ruins the life of his workplace bully. Our next Reddit post is from Lincoln Ford. As a teenager, I got a part-time job as a lifeguard at the biggest pool in the city, if not the province. I was a hard worker, and over the years, I had every certification that I could get. Over the summers, I'd often work on nearby beaches. One year, these rural beaches had a really hard time keeping staff, so they'd ask people from my pool to work there. It just so happened that my parents had a cottage on one of those beaches, so I said, hey, I'd be interested in working in one of those middle of nowhere beaches. It'd be peaceful, and I could come home on the weekends if I wanted to. I took the job, which was about four hours away from home for a 10-week contract. I was a lifeguard instructor trainer. I would certify people to teach other people how to train lifeguards. At the time of this story, I was one of the youngest people to have this certification. Most of my coworkers were going into their second year of working on this beach, and frankly, their second year of being a lifeguard. It was going to be my first year working in this area, and basically the head manager told me, Look, it's your first time working out here. We need someone with your experience. We can't give you the beach captain position on paper, but we are willing to pay you at a beach captain rate plus extra for your certifications. Also, you can fill in as beach captain on days when others can't. As far as we're concerned, you're an alternate. We don't want to upset the locals more than we need to. Be advised though, you may need to work at a few other beaches out around there. Hmm, more pay and fewer responsibilities? Yeah, I guess I could take this one for the team. Here's what you need to know about this place. The area is incredibly naturally beautiful. It has one of the best drives on the continent, and it's in one of the top 10 islands in the world. Mountains on the left, endless oceans to the right, and beaches everywhere. It's also one of the poorest parts of the country, and some communities have a mob mentality when outsiders come to work here. For the most part, my coworkers liked me and appreciated my experience, except for one beach captain who we'll call Maggie. Every employee went to a training camp retreat. District managers went for five days, beach captains went for four days, and general staff went for three days. I was only asked to show up for three days as general staff. I did my thing, met my new coworkers, Maggie rubbed me the wrong way and started calling me rookie, and then she left. It turns out she was graduating high school and had to attend prom. She didn't want to do all the training because of all the after prom parties. Okay, that's weird. I'm waking up at 7am to do a 10 kilometer run with everyone before breakfast, and you're passed out after a night of drinking. I'm annoyed, but if I could pull it off I might do the same, so no biggie. How could Maggie pull off getting out of mandatory training you ask? Well, she's a family legacy. Once upon a time, her mom was the beach captain, and she now runs a local pool in this middle of nowhere town. If you were certified as a lifeguard around here, then you had to go through her. Maggie's sister had previously been the beach captain, then the district manager, and recently retired from the service and went to nursing school. Maggie was the next in line to do this, and she was going to be awarded a scholarship through the lifeguard service for her school of choice. At the end of summer they would announce it, but it was a well-known secret. Day one of the summer on the beach starts. We're setting up the beach, it's just a half day, and not many patrons are around. We organize first aid kits, equipment, set up our hut, test out our phones, etc. The district manager arrives to inspect everything. He's happy. He's a buddy of mine because we were the last stop on his beaches to inspect so he would hang out with us. A few days later, Maggie's mother shows up and tells Maggie to start packing for the swimming instructor's symposium. Turns out, Maggie is leaving tomorrow for the Dominican Republic on her pool's dime for three weeks. That's 30% of the lifeguard season. She actually tells me, see you in three weeks, rookie, and leaves. The district manager and I drop our jaws and wonder, WTF? Why is this only coming out now? Together, we sit down and come up with a new schedule for the next three weeks. My supervisor had to fill in some of Maggie's shifts, and we even worked together a few times. It was more work for me, but honestly, Maggie's departure was a blessing. I had hardly met her, but I doubt that we were going to get along. She just rubbed me the wrong way. Those three weeks without her, I had this great feng shui, zen groove, inner harmony thing going on. It was the healthiest, mentally and physically, that I've been in my entire life. Of course, the lack of negative emotions directed toward me would not last. That ended the day that Maggie returned, literally within the first hour of us working together. Maggie, the beach captain, started her day with me by berating me in front of her friends. 
Hey, rookie, do you even know how to do CPR? I was watching you at training camp and you were doing it wrong. I need you to show me how to do it right now. You want me to show you how to do CPR? Sure, no problem. You could have asked me nicer, but whatever, I'll put up with this. We have to practice CPR every day anyway. Then Maggie dropped this bit of information on me while I practiced, quote, incorrectly. If you don't have anything under the patient, then you have to dig a hole in the sand. That doesn't make sense, but whatever. It's not like I'm an instructor in this or anything, or have a basic knowledge of physics that pushing on sand is not the same thing as digging. The whole day consisted of Maggie calling me a rookie and being pointlessly rude in her critiques of my life-saving skills. And, of course, it wouldn't be a good work story unless someone stole someone else's lunch. So one day I said, Hey, Maggie, is that my lunch in your mouth right now? Oh, was that your lunchbox? Well, it wasn't your lunchbox, was it? Um, I'm the beach captain. You can't talk to me like that. This would become our daily routine on our shifts together. I began packing a decoy lunch with half-eaten items or empty wrappers. This gave me the opportunity to hide and then eat my real lunch without her bothering me. By week four, it was our mid-season evaluation. There's two parts, a physical evaluation and a professional evaluation. The district manager does the physical and it's straightforward. All employees show up at the beach before it opens. You run four kilometers, swim 600 meters, paddle two kilometers, etc. Apparently, I embarrassed Maggie. I was the most improved from the start of the season to the end of the season. I was already in the top 25%, but now I was physically one of the top 5%. Maggie, however, had gotten worse. A lot worse. She was mediocre and had originally scored in the top 50%, but now she was one of the worst guards physically in the bottom 10%. Her times were all substantially lower. But luckily for her, it's not all physical. There's also the professional evaluation. The beach captain who works with you the most writes up your evaluation. You get a score out of 50. You get graded, and short notes are written to explain your score. At the bottom, there's a recommendation section on what you need to work on. One of the other beach captains, who tolerated Maggie, wrote her evaluation, and it wasn't all bad. Of course, Maggie was the one who wrote my evaluation, despite only working with me a few times. I didn't get to see it, which is normal, and when she was done writing it, she passed it to the boss. Once it was handed in, the district manager pulled Maggie and I aside. He ripped up her evaluation in front of us and said, Maggie, this isn't a real evaluation. You gave them all zeros. Your notes are incoherent, and in the recommendation section, you told him to leave and never come back. This is not acceptable. I've worked with OP more than you have, so I'm going to write up the mid-season evaluation. Maggie breaks down in tears, plays the victim that the outsider is taking her job, and she's just protecting herself. The manager's not buying it, but ultimately he does go easier on her. Temper's cool, and I get a modest review with things to improve on. Right away, I knew this would happen again, and I would need to make notes to defend myself. I have a reputation that I need to protect. Things got weirder after this. Aside from her constantly calling me rookie, my notebook was getting filled with highlights that included. She stole my, quote, rooster ketchup with a green top and lathered her hot dog with it, only to then get upset with me, and she wrote me up for poisoning her with hot sauce. Though, really, she just stole my sriracha. She took her top off in front of me and in full view of kids because she had to air out the girls. She went on a walking patrol down the beach for two hours, only to end up hanging out with her friends, drinking on the beach, and having a fire, which is a double no-no. She called her dealer to deliver joints to her while she was on guard, not even discreetly. I took the time to teach some junior guards some basic stuff. Once the class was over, she went up to all the parents and told them that I taught them all incorrectly and that it was actually done this way instead. On a particularly bad day, she berated this middle-aged gentleman with Down syndrome who normally brought her treats because he didn't bring her treats on this day. Things were cartoonishly stupid. Why would someone act this way? Turns out, she was also bashing me to the other guards. They would regularly inform me of stuff like, Hey, just so you know, Maggie told me that you hit someone's car with a hammer. Obviously you didn't, but heads up, she's telling locals about it. What did I get myself into? This is ridiculous. My summer paradise at the most beautiful place on earth is ruined by a succubus leeching off of inner peace. 
I was at my end. This isn't worth it. I want to go home. I was being belittled by an entitled brat, and I don't need this as much as they need me. I decided to go sleep it off and then think with a clear head in the morning. Fast forward to 5.30 a.m. and I hear, Huh? What's happening? OP? Ugh, answer your phone. I've been calling you all night. Ugh, why are you naked? That's gross. You have to work at the beach further away today. I've got an appointment that I've had scheduled for months and I can't change it. You need to go there because I won't be back in time. Wait, what's going on? Why is Maggie in my house right now? I thought to myself as I jumped up to cover my nakedness with whatever I could find. I raised my voice and got her out of my home as quickly as possible. And I said to myself, that's it. I'm done. This is not worth it. I called my district manager and told him the rundown of what was happening lately. Initially, he thought that I might be embellishing the truth a bit because it was all so ridiculous. He tells me that if I go to work, there's two weeks left in the contract, and he'll make sure that Maggie and I don't work together anymore as long as I can stick around. Later on, I was begrudgingly working at the further away beach and I get a call from the district manager. OP, I owe you an apology. I thought you were making this stuff up. Maggie just called to report you for being naked and yelling at her. As she explained this, she admitted to just walking into your home. What do you want me to do about this? So I asked the district manager, which beach captain or alternate has worked the most with Maggie this summer? Oh, hmm, looks like it's you by a fair bit. Is she allowed to do my end of season evaluation? No, because of what she did with your mid-season evaluation, we decided that I would do it personally again. Okay, great. So, who gets to do hers then? Well, you can guess where this ended up. As luck would have it, Maggie and I got to work together one more time due to someone being sick. The whole time she was telling me, I'm gonna make your reviews so bad. You're gonna wish you never came here, rookie. At that point, I just smiled. The summer may have its last on, but this will be the end of you, Maggie. Writing up Maggie's end of season evaluation was a secret between the supervisor and I. The rest of the staff were unaware of this. So, I took advantage of the final days of summer by asking the staff, what's the weirdest thing that Maggie did to you this summer? Here are some highlights. Maggie stole the attractive lifeguard's car keys at the end of the day to keep him around because she was flirting with him. He had to go straight to the hospital after his shift to visit his mom. Gradually, over the course of a day, she spiked this 16-year-old lifeguard's water bottle with vodka. He'd never been drunk before and he had to drive home. After hours, she went to a lifeguard girl's night out and she skipped out on the bill. No, she was not invited again after that. So, I'm writing up her end of season evaluation. I'm smart about it. I grade reasonably well with things that, to her credit, she was good at. She improved her swimming skills, which is something after all. But everything else, I avoided giving her a zero or a one as much as possible to avoid making it look like I was purposely out to get her. And more than just grading, I'm providing written documentation to back this up. I've got my journal of hellish Maggie moments, my coworkers' experiences with her, and I've been smart enough to make copies of notes left by customers. And my coup de grace recommendation for next season was, I recommend not to re-offer beach captain status or alternate beach captain position next season. I recommend awarding the scholarship to someone else. Not long after this, I get a call from the big boss who isn't aware of my situation with Maggie. OP, I've known you for a few years. I'm reading Maggie's end of season evaluation and there's some serious allegations here. Her family will likely rebuke this and make it a problem for my office. Not giving her this scholarship sounds harsh. Do you have any documentation to back up any of this? Do you really think that she deserves this? Well sir, ultimately that's up to you. Here are my notes and timestamps from the entire team. Feel free to call any of them. Here's the footage from my trail cam of her breaking into my home at 5.30 in the morning. Here's the contact info for the gentleman with Down syndrome whom she berated. And here's all the complaints that patrons have made about her. Oh, hmm, this is bad. Well, thanks for being so thorough with this. Well, word got out to her that she would not be receiving her scholarship. Instead, it went to an incredibly nice hard worker in another district. 
Maggie's mom complained for a while about out-of-towners taking all the jobs, but then she heard how Maggie treated the gentleman with Down syndrome. Maggie may have been the town's princess, but that man was the salt of the earth and immune to any harsh treatment. Needless to say, Maggie did not come to the yearly conference. The next year, I was knee-deep in my actual career and I didn't re-enroll in the lifeguard service. But I did offer my services as a substitute. One of the guards I liked last year called me to see if I could sub for them for a weekend. I decided that I would do it as long as Maggie wasn't working. He laughed and said no, but she is on staff as a regular lifeguard. Well, Maggie wasn't working, but her cousin was. Uh-oh, this can't be good. Our first interaction was kind of amazing. Wait, is your name OP? Uh, yeah. And I prepared myself to receive a day of harassment. Oh man, you are awesome! Maggie and her mom hate you! They're so mean, our family hates them! She's so entitled and she makes us look bad. You're like a legend around here. Well, that's a change of pace from what I was expecting. We became friends over the course of the day and she explained to me that Maggie thought her scholarship was a sure thing. Her mom had pulled strings for her to get it and it fell through so she never saved any money for school. Maggie's plans of getting into nursing didn't work out. Maggie's mom took a lateral promotion in the life-saving world. The new position didn't last, and she was laid off only to go back to her old pool as the assistant to the person who took over her job. She wasn't able to pull any more strings after that. Last time I checked, Maggie went to community college and took a less expensive course with the plan of eventually jumping over to nursing when she saves enough money. Unfortunately for her, the instructors weren't crazy about her better-than-you attitude, and she was kicked out of the course sometime in her second year. Last time I saw her, she was working at the summer ice cream stand by the beach that I visited on a lovely vacation to one of the most beautiful places in the world. The most frustrating part of this story for me is, so obviously OP knows how to do CPR, so if Maggie comes up and she's like, oh, you're doing that wrong, then if OP's doing it correctly, then she has to just make up like completely BS reasons for why he's doing it wrong. So she tries to say that if you want to give someone CPR and there's nothing underneath them, you have to dig a hole underneath them. So like imagine some kid is drowning on seawater because seawater is in his lungs and he's slowly dying. And some lifeguard who bought her BS takes the time to dig a hole underneath this kid's back in the sand, which itself, I would assume, I don't know CPR, but I would that would have to make it worse, right? Because when you press down, if there's a hole underneath the patient's back in the sand, then that would like cause their chest to give. So you put less pressure on, basically that would just make it so you put less pressure on their lungs, right? Which would make it less effective, I imagine. Do any of my viewers out there actually know CPR? Because I would love it if you could comment on this. Because based on my kind of rudimentary knowledge about CPR, this would have to be a bad idea on multiple levels, right? And then, <laughs> and then to top it all off, how entitled and stupid you have to be to break into someone else's house and then get mad at them because they're naked. It's like, lady, I'm asleep at 5.30 a.m. in what sounds like some sort of tropical location, so of course I'm gonna be naked because it's like 90 degrees here. And you're gonna report me for that after breaking into my home? What are you, nuts? That was r slash pro revenge, and if you like this content, check out my Patreon where I publish extra episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.